Coming out of the inaugural Agri-Investment Forum and exposition hosted by Guyana in 2021, a local businessman has invested heavily in the local agriculture sector, establishing what will be a massive fertilizer mixing plant for the supply of soil-specific mixed fertilizers for the rice and sugar industries here. The investors, Pandit Harish Tiwari of Fertilizer Technologies Incorporated, Fertech, based at Luzignan on the east coast of Demerara. According to Mr. Tiwari, the establishment of the the company is based on seven years of research into the soils of Guyana's coastal, intermediate, and hinterland locations. Our company is a wholly owned local Guyanese company that has over the past six years been involved in research, research especially for the rice industry and to create a a special mix of fertilizer to enhance yields in the rice industry. Um, our research has basically been very scientific and soil based where we have been studying the soils from different farmers throughout the length and breadth of Guyana's rice cultivation, um, ascertaining the, the condition of the soil to include what deficiencies, what imbalances, different toxicity or um, levels of pH and so on. And in this process, we have, we have identified some very critical problems in Guyana's rice soil, to which we have started formulating different regimen that are especially suited for different soils and that's why we call it a soil specific nutrient formulation. According to the investor, during the period of its research, the company has undertaken several pilot projects during which it tested its soil nutrient formulations based on soil tests and analyses. Pilot project, pilot formulations and we are, we are very, very happy to, to say that um, in our last sets of research work and developmental work, we have been able to lift the yields in rice farms to a minimum of eight bags per acre, eight bags of paddy, that is, per acre. That was the national average that we had gotten after doing immense amount of um, trials. This, this is eight bags on top of whatever they were getting before. That's correct. Eight additional, eight incremental bags. At the time when we did our formulation, the cost of our additional fertilizer would have been translated to less than four bags. So effectively, farmers were making an additional four bags of of paddy per acre. Um, that is only the average, but I'd like to also state that in some cases, farmers were able to achieve at least 10 to 15 additional bags of, of paddy per acre. And that's monumental. Now, because of this success that we have gotten in our, in our research work, um, we have now started the commercialization of this process. By and far, what Fortec does in our existing regimen is that we, we provide a fertilizer that has two macro elements, and that is TSP, triple superphosphate, and MOP, murate of potash. In addition to that, we are also providing all the micro elements zinc, boron, calcium, sulfur, magnesium, all the other different um, micro elements that we find are very lacking in the soil. Mr. Tiwari explained that during the research, it was found that Guyana's rice farmers were only focusing on adding the macro fertilizers, oblivious to the need for the micronutrients, which can only be determined through soil tests. He disclosed that for the spring crop this year, the company has provided soil-specific nutrient formulations for 2,500 acres. You know, over the year, traditionally, farmers in the rice industry have basically only been using macro fertilizer, which is the NPK, um, 
potassium, nitrogen, and the phosphorus. Now, this is not the best of application for the rice industry because, you know, like our own bodies, we need all the vitamins, we need all the minerals for proper metabolizing, for proper release of fertilizer that may be in the soil but inaccessible um, by the plants. So we have to create compounds that allow, that allow this, this, these elements which may be there to free themselves, to be liberated so that the plant can get it. So our research, and this is, you know, Guyanese research, um, you know, based on the last uh, pronouncement by our government that, you know, we are, where they're encouraging local people to do research. We're very happy that we have taken that step long before even that call was made to do this research. We've spent hundreds and thousands of US dollars in this research over time. Now that is why we have invested well over half a million dollars in fertilizer for our major commercialization of this fertilizer which we have started in this particular November, December rice crop season. Um, so for this season we are, we are producing fertilizer for 2,500 acres of rice land and um, what you see here is what we are constantly batching and processing for, for that thing. The Guyanese businessman stressed that while the operation at the moment is relatively small, the company has already invested in a state-of-the-art fertilizer mixing plant, which will arrive later this year. This is a very bold step from our standpoint um, because the investment in this particular project is very, very significant. The company has already invested into a state-of-the-art brand new fertilizer batching, um, batching, mixing, as well as palletizing plant. So this will see us being able to produce fertilizer for the entire rice industry. Um, our target is also on the sugar industry and the other agricultural industries, so you're being in corn. Now, this state-of-the-art facility will be costing us at least five million US dollars and then of course working capital for this is another three million US dollars but this we are very encouraged by the result we have been seeing to move into this project of course our bank is very very keen um, in facilitating this process because having seen the yields I think everybody is very satisfied. Lands for the ramping up of the project has already been secured along the Demerara River and the preparatory work in anticipation of the arrival of the state-of-the-art plant are already on their way. So this, this is, a, is a huge project, let me say, that we'll be doing this project on the Demerara River um, where we have, we have already, um, we secured the land for this. We have to, we're now going through the regulatory um, processes to get the permission from Maritime, from EPA and everybody else to set this plant up. Um, I figure our, our civil works on this project will start maybe in the second, second quarter of 2023. The plant is already 95% um, complete and we are hoping in January this will be shipped to Guyana. So I want to believe um, realistically by the end of 2023, our plant will be up and running. That plant will have a 15 tons per hour production capability. That means that we'd be able to produce enough fertilizer for basically the rice industry in this country in 2024. Now, it's very important to understand um, rice, is, rice is done in Guyana, in the Essequibo, in the Mahaika Maikoni, in the, uh, in the Burbies, in the quarantine regions. So we are moving to establish this processing plant on the Demara River because in this way, we'd be able to move our fertilizer, our finished product via river to all these different areas. Of course, coming into the Demerara, it means also that we'll be able to bring big volumes, big, big ships with full bulk cargo of all these fertilizers to the, to the plant. Easy, easy discharge, easy loading, easy processing just there. And our objective is, as I said, we believe that um, by the by come 2024, we'd be in position to start delivering.
According to Mr. Tiwari, the current facility is capable of supplying approximately 5,000 acres of rice lands per crop, a figure that will be greatly expanded upon incrementally as the company gets up to speed. I asked Mr. Tiwari about the thorny issue of rising costs of fertilizer and how his company has factored this into its production drive. Um, we have done the numbers. We have done the numbers. Um, and um, I'm pleased to say this is why we're moving to gather the economies of scale um, to, to bring the numbers down, right? When I can bring, let's say, calcium carbonate or sulfur and, and calcium together in 5,000, 6,000 ton ships, what we've had to do here is to bring it in 20 foot, 20 foot containers. So you can see how is it that we will, um, we will optimize where cost is concerned. And that is the fundamental thing. We need to manage the cost. And again, because we will have our own facility, own warfage, own discharge, own offloading facility, it means my throughput logistic cost will be far lower than anybody else can maybe bring 10, 15, 20 containers. Because when I bring 3,000 to 5, 6,000 tons of fertilizer in one go, the unit cost of shipping, and right now, we know we've been bombarded for the past years with a high elevated shipping cost. And this is how we intend to, um, to minimize the cost. But ultimately, once we start doing this, then we can bring the cost down. And of course, that will benefit the final delivered price to our farmers. So we are hoping by what the investment and the strategic outlook that we are taking, that this will bring the, 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 the benefit that farmers are looking towards. Our objectives is very definitive and um, we have made a commitment as a local company to doing our part um, for, the, for the industry. Fort Tech is also currently conducting research in the Takama savannas in the upper reaches of the Burbies River with a view to contributing to the development of the corn and soybean industry there. Commenting on the advent of this local investor, Deputy General Manager of the Guyana Rice Development Board, Mr. Kuldip Ragnod, said the investment is a timely one that fits well with the GRDB's six-point plan for a successful rice crop, one of which is ensuring proper nutrition. We actually have been uh, using that uh, practice as part of our, our six points practice. And if I can just briefly mention what the six points are, it's time of sowing, seed rate or seed density, seed treatment, nutrition, weed control and water management. As you can see, nutrition, which is actually balanced nutrition we're talking about here, fits into the, the six, or is part of the, of the six practices. It's a very important aspect. All six points are, are important, but the nutrition aspect of it is more important in the sense that it provides, that is a component that deals with food for the plant. And um, we, we all recognize that if the plant does not get enough food or does not get the, the required element in the right quantities, it will not be able to grow, it will not develop into a healthy plant and therefore will not, will not be able to produce uh, a healthy crop or a healthy, healthy uh, yield. Having said that, the concept of, of soil nutrition uh, is based on, the, first, of all, first and foremost, soil analysis and soil testing. Because you want to establish what is the status of the soil, what is in the soil, what nutrients or elements are in the soil. That can only be done or achieved through soil, soil testing. Uh, those 
it will it will indicate what what are the deficiencies or what are the limiting elements in the soil and it also indicate what are those elements that are in excess quantities this is one aspect that we really never um, highlight those elements that are that are, that are in excess what of what the plant requires and we do have them especially iron and we refer to that as iron toxicity so they are they are um, elements that are you know that can be toxic to the plant so the the soil test indicates like i said what what elements are are deficient and those that are that are toxic in toxic content overall it's to to establish the nutritional status of the soil once that once that is is known the farmer will be more informed in his application of fertilizers because the the soil test will be followed and the soil analysis will be followed by a soil recommendation. So the laboratory that is doing the analysis, they will look at the deficiency, look at the condition of the general condition, the state of the soil, and provide a recommendation as to what the, you should apply to the crop in terms of how much, how much nitrogen, how much phosphorus, how much potassium, if there is need for, for the trace element, the minor elements, and we have seen cases where, where boron was required in soils in Guyana. That was never established before 2010. They, we, we did a study in that, in that year, 2009, 2010, and um, it was found at that time that boron was a limiting element to the growth and development of plants, or, of the rice crop. So those elements, the recommendation will, will be tailored or will be aligned to what they are or correspond to what the, the soil test reveals. It is against this backdrop that the GRDB official welcomed the establishment of the company that will be facilitating soil tests and providing the nutrient-specific formulations for lands across the rice growing belt. Well, I believe that, that that's a very good initiative uh, because it, it captures what I, I mentioned earlier in terms of uh, doing the soil test, have the analysis done, uh, come up with a recommendation, and uh, applying it, the fertilizer, with, with precision at the right time, at the right dose, and the right placement. So it captures all those elements that I mentioned earlier and it, it actually puts it in, in a package that you can take to the farmer. So it's a, it's a very good initiative. Uh, we here are dependent now to, to have the soil analyzed overseas, right? Now, and that, take, that takes some time from the time you take the sample to the, to the time you receive the results and the recommendation. It takes a month, sometimes more than a month. Sowing is going on, the farmer needs the information. So the fact that it's, it's being done locally, it reduces that right away. So you will be having the fertilizer uh, application being done in a more timely manner. And that's, that's, the first, that's the first gain uh, or the benefit of this, of this local initiative. The fact that you can have the soil being tested, analyzed right here, and pass that information to, to the farmer, it's like real-time information going to the farmer. So it's, he, will be, he will not be guessing in terms of what he has to apply to the soil and how much he has to apply to the soil. He is more informed and therefore what you do you reduce you reduce 
the excess so you reduce losses. You know exactly how much fertilizer you have to apply. Therefore, you would not put less, you would not be putting more. In some cases, we do put more, so it's, it's excess, so we want to reduce that. Uh, so it's, you're exact in what you're doing. Precision. And that's precision. That's precision. So we welcome that, we welcome that initiative by, by this group of, of individuals to, to um, uh, promote or, or establish this program. Agriculture Minister Zofi Kaya Mustafa has welcomed the investment by Pandit Tiwari and his team at Fertec, noting that this investment is one that was spurred by the recent Agro Investment Forum and Expo, which was hosted in Guyana in 2021. That will help us, and I visited that area, that, that plant, that will help us to in, increase yield, especially in the rice sector, because as we, as we stand now, we are looking to, um, we, we, have, we have already um, brought out last year, a new variety and that have increased our yield tremendously and with this new farm that and, and those fertilizers that you talk about to enhance our crop that will help us to increase production without increasing acreage but increase yield and that will help us to ramp up production and we are having more investors coming like those type in Guyana so that is that is where the investment forum the investment forum that we had is beneficial to us because we are seeing a number of investors coming into our country, not only in those areas, but in thing, new, new things like new technology, hydroponics. We have an Israeli company now that will be setting up at Manripo. They will start entire, that will be the high, largest hydroponic parks in the, uh, park in the Caribbean, where Guyana will be leading in that. So I think that in the new year, as I said, we'll have increased production, but at the same time, we'll have new variety, new technology coming into the agriculture sector.